to bring this vision to life. It will help us keep agriculture strong in the Hawkesbury. The member for Monash has the call. Yeah, tonight, as the Victorian government looks set to pass its controversial pandemic bill, I feel compelled to acknowledge Australians who, unlike me, have been forced to choose between getting vaccinated or losing their job. It makes no sense to me that Commonwealth officials who work in windowless offices are not mandated to be vaccinated, while vaccinations for farmers, producers and their workers in my electorate have been mandated. I consider that that's just not right, it's not fair and it's illogical. Mr Speaker, for the record, I want to acknowledge that I know I'm privileged not to be faced with having to make such a decision. Over the past nine months, I've spoken with hundreds of people in distress, many who are suffering on a scale that I find difficult to comprehend. I'm sure that my fellow members and senators are also receiving gut-wrenching stories as well. So I want to honour some of these people who bear witness and bear witness to their suffering. Mr Speaker, I have purposely changed the names of the um, people that I'm about to explain to you because I don't want them to suffer significantly for the stands that they've taken. Firstly, there's Nina, a single mum in her late 30s with two children who felt coerced to get jabbed to keep her job as an aged care nurse. Nina came away feeling violated after first jab. The fact that she felt coerced into getting it left her reliving trauma associated with having been raped when she was 20. She says she feels disgusted in herself that she gave in to the coercion. And Deanie, a schoolteacher and her 13-year-old daughter who endured four weeks stranded in New South Wales, living in a stranger's caravan whilst trying to get back into Queensland to rejoin her husband and son. David and Lita, primary school teachers and parents to three boys who are on unpaid leave while they wait to see if the mandates change. Carolyn, a doctor who has decided to retire early so she can speak freely and advocate for patients, family and friends. Ahmed, a chef who now provides companionship and cleaning services instead of doing the work that he loves. Bonnie, who, having recovered from COVID eight months ago, is fearful of being vaccinated and will lose her job as a hairdresser unless she can obtain an exemption. Ta Tonya, who was told by her GP of more than 30 years that she couldn't see her face to face unless she was vaccinated. And Catherine and Rick, parents of two teenage girls who have decided to sell their business in order to set up a sustainable life on the land with friends so their daughters don't have to be vaccinated at least until the daughters can make up their own mind, their own decision. Then there's Sarah, who lives with her partner and five children aged six to 18 years. Sarah and David have been registered nurses for the past 30 years and lost jobs which they love simply because, in their professional medical opinion, they were not prepared to be jabbed with an experimental vaccine. Sarah was terminated from a nursing position after 24 years. Her partner was terminated after 18 years of service. Sarah and David are now living off their limited savings and will soon join the Centrelink queue, which they have never done before, to pay their mortgage bills and feed their children because they are unable to find employment. But more than anything, Sarah wanted to tell me about the impact um, this, is, this mandatory vaccinations are having on her and her children. She's angry and scared and complete loss to understand the unnecessary and unfair adverse impacts on, our children, on her children. Her son has just completed year 12 and works as a lifeguard at two local pools but can no, no longer do so. He also wants to go to university next year to study either nursing or paramedicine but now can't unless he gets double jabbed. He also can't pursue his love of participation in musicals or attend venture scouting activities. Sarah, 16-year-old daughter, has all completed her surf life saving certificate but can't volunteer now either. Her 10-year-old is the only child who can access the pool. However, this would be unsupervised. As nobody else in the family can go, she ended with a plea, a plea for me to help save the children. I note that Dr Nick Coatesworth, highly regarded, highly regarded medical person, is completely at odds with the rest of the medical profession by saying 
he's strongly against the need for children to be vaccinated. I have to say, so am I.